Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, another wondrous propaganda cast. Me, host Imperial Dane, a Monday novice fight with some less than novice players for you today. Somewhere around the middling level, perhaps with a few grand mistakes. So less talking about unit preservation, more talking about strategic and tactical issues that might appear to up during a fight. And we're also immediately noting here that Mr. Of course, noting here that General Oberst Erhard Raus, an actual vet, taking the name from a rather veteran German Panzer commander, fighting for the Germans in this case for the Sperrverbande Raus. Let's just call it that. Opposing him shall be red and black, fighting for the Soviet Union and the 15th Mechanized Brigade. Hurrah and huzzah! Again, no, these will not be that rubbish players. I certainly, again, describe them as being reasonably competent players. There's certainly some mistakes that stand out in this match, which will probably do with being pointed out in a Monday Novice fight. And the only Monday Novice fight material I received was a bit the same few guys repeating the same few mistakes. So I figured I'd try something slightly different this time around. See if that works out. If not, well, there's always the next Monday. I would certainly not imply either these two players are terrible. Though of course there's always going to be someone in the comments. And already right here I'm noting something I'm perhaps not so hugely fond of, but apparently Red and Black going for a second combat engineer squad. That quick launch and of special rifle command in some sense I suppose he's trying to quickly grab some territory and then follow up with some troops, but at the same time, that quickly could set him back, although, of course, at the same time, it's not going to be that much off worse, because we are known here that Erhard Raus has already been securing aggressive with two Pioneer Squads, which, of course, also lowers his combat power. Not something I necessarily recommend to novices. Again, it's something that can be a bit risky if you don't know how to handle it. Grenadiers following up. The second Grenadier Squad on the way. That's, on the other hand, a slightly more safe build. Getting several Grenadier Squads. They're definitely the backbone of the German army and should certainly be relied upon as such. This I would certainly not recommend to novices, this is some pretty ballsy stuff. And could easily backfire, and of course right here, red and black needs to get away, close up to the pioneers, there's a very high chance of losing, but this time looks like the pioneers might in fact be the ones losing, in fact retreating. Wunderbar, Ganadis here with his conscripts. Bit of a brutal fight here. Grenadier smart win. In fact, there we go. Second Grenadier squad appearing to the rescue of the first squad. The Erste Zug. And looks like these conscripts will in fact be run off the field. Also leaving Red and Black South very vulnerable. Although we are finally seeing something being sent north as well. MD 40s appearing. But he's continuing up north. And there we go. Combat engineers are themselves rushed off as well. Initial engagement not too well. And scalp cup rush from Red and Black again. Something a bit dangerous. It can work out quite nicely, but one got Panzerfaust, and it's all going to be for naught. But rather, it comes down to how Red and Black actually utilizes this. If it shall be glorious victory or a serious explanation to the NKVD as to how you lost. But two Grenadiers, MG, two Pioneers. All right, start. Not so many units, of course, for Mr. Red and Black immediately goes, of course, with the combat engineers with the flamethrowers and the scout car. Ever fond usage of that. Second MD42 following up. Aroused otherwise going for a pretty standard build in many regards. Two Grenadiers, two MGs. Also a good one in the first company of heroes. Pioneers popping into here, taking up a delaying position, though should be careful, of course. He does know, of course, of Red and Black's incendiary intentions, but he'll soon see. Second conscript squad arriving there. He could, of course, also try with some Penal troops right there from the Special Rifle Command do a lot more damage. But rolling up there, Pioneers need to be a bit careful for sixth. Also noting here, this is definitely what though I'd call a bit of a novice mistake right away. He's putting in an MG42 inside a building. I mean, that close on, mm, it would have to be a pretty good building, but this is a building with a pretty huge floor. Only one door and it covers this exact spot. That's something that could easily be taken advantage of. I mean, it's going to be covered here. Great. Here, great. But again, this is a pretty important spot. A pretty important blind angle which can easily be discovered. And in that case, the MD40 could be in a lot of trouble because it's also pretty much the only place to exit. So that's a problem. But we are seeing here that Red and Black is pushing pretty aggressively. 
He should very much consider actually mining up when he pushes out aggressively. I mean, usually heavy and aggressive play will also result in heavy and aggressive losses. And what you then want to do is actually mine so that it becomes harder for the opponent to get back into the fight. Malik bunker up this early on. Interesting, interesting. And a bit of teching up. And it is slowly moving north. Ehad Raj has already suffered heavily. And I mean, that's a bit of a problem because he's actually spread himself out so thinly and putting MD42s into small shacks. That's definitely, on the other hand, less than good. Also, considering the sort of placement of the shacks, they are pretty in both, at least the northern case here, less than good. So that would definitely be something for Erhard Raus to consider a bit more where he places MD42s. Usually, you want MD42s in buildings to be a bit more part of an overall defense, just like a banker. Otherwise, you generally have more benefit on having them out in the open where they can more organically support troops to be part of a defense. Because this situation could easily end up nastily. And it's only rather because apparently Red and Black is not paying attention that he's going to get lucky with this one. Pulling back the scout car, Flame for Engineers finally up, but still I would have loved to see some mines. I mean this would have been a good spot to mine. This would have been a good spot to mine. This would have been a good spot to mine. Generally I mean mining, mining, mining. Mines wins war. And so on. Mine Kampf. Again, mines are important. Looks like Erdraus is getting the idea that perhaps this shack is not the best place to place his MD-42, although now he's leaving up another nice blind angle. This one managed to stop a bit of a flanking attempt, but not managing to stop the cutoff. Erdraus in desperate trouble in terms of resource control. And he needs to quickly rectify that before it's all lost. Also, quick fuel cash up for red and black. That, on the other hand, could work out nicely. But he's still rather close and low on common use. Now, of course, another problem with this is, of course, this once you see scout cars with flames, I mean, this is really going to become rather weak and vulnerable. Scout car here, they're in trouble. And in this case, Red and Black really hadn't thought out the placement of it, or the usage of it. In fact, he probably should have stayed around here. Instead, he came within range of machine gun bunkers, and he lost his scout car. The combat engineers, well, one of them survived. The rest died in the horrible car crash, leaving the last man deeply traumatized and ever afraid of using a scout car again. Yet, not the scout car! Quickly taking up, so I mean, what Red and Black here is going for is a very aggressive rush strategy. I mean, you can identify that with the low number of units. Quickly moving on to something aggressive to apply pressure. Scout car, for example. And now fuel cash, and then he's moving on. This is very much pressure, pressure, pressure. Quickly trying to outpace his opponent in terms of technology, and then hit him with something his opponent isn't quite prepared for. And Erhard Raus is a bit unsure. He's seen scout cars, so he's going for scout cars of his own. He's thankfully not upgrading, so of course he's realizing that if he upgrades them, he's going to pretty much have them rendered useless afterwards. But that's definitely going to be a much more mobile element to react to what's going on. That's definitely going to benefit Raus. In the longer run, Erhard Raus being the commander of a Panzer Division later on a Panzer Corps, served under Walter Model for quite some time, was a trusted commander of that. Field Marshal has also in fact written several books where well, there have been books published out of his writings because after the war the United States Army was rather fond of, you know, trying to figure out how to fight the Russians, so they went to the ones who actually fought them, and that was the German generals. And after the war, they wrote a lot of, you know, basically memoirs of sorts, well, basically notes, and afterwards, later on, other authors have then sort of compiled these into books, and Erhard Rasburg Sam has then had several books that way put out. So, little fun fact there, and this, on the other hand, I would describe as a bit curious in particular since it's not going to be very durable not very strong and he would really have just benefited than just getting one penal troop squad and upgrade with flame first that would ultimately have done more damage this is oh scout car here bit poor handling from Erhard Raus although of course they're able to lay down a lot of suppress well impressive fire this and I'll just call it the patrol configuration because it's quite handy as a patrol quite handy at punishing harassers But again, not a huge fan of this, in particular also because of a lot of munitions. Again, munitions we could have been spent on, yes indeed, ladies and gentlemen, mines. Also, I'll just briefly stop to point this out. Sort of doctrines, what do we have available? Lightning war, joint operations, Jaeger armor, I guess I should have pointed that out earlier. And from red and black we're seeing, well, conscript support, so I can't point out the others. My fault, my fault. We are seeing a T-70 on the way, and he's back, 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 schnell. 
MD42 here, slightly awkward position, and we are seeing here the red and black takes advantage of the gap in the fence and pushes in aggressively, although in this case, of course, he wasn't aware of the position of the MD42. The blizzard made it difficult to see, and so he went this way and got caught. Again, in that sense, you need to be a bit more careful when you're moving about in a blizzard. You never know what might happen, but at least in this case, he did have another unit nearby to provide support. In that sense, this was a good move, sort of. Obviously not perfect, but there we go. T-70 light tank out, Conscript being a grip with submachine guns. One of two primary submachine guns the Soviets used later on was the PPS-43. PPS not quite the same name and number as the PPS-41, but was basically that just a cheaper to make version and also one with a more regular magazine because the drum one was a bit tricky in some ways. Plus I think a bit heavy. Basically the same issues that the Thompson submachine guns suffered from. But overall, the Germans were quite fond of using it. They captured millions of them, and they converted a whole bunch of them as well. T-70 here, though, a bit poorly played. Got too close to the infantry, and those Panzerfaust is something you want to be careful with. And we are seeing a pack 40 moving up. So right here, Red and Black did conduct a blunder. Poor handling of his light tank. Usually you want it acting at range, you know, a bit more... Like a dervish, less of a brawler. And problem is, that's rather how Red and, Red and Black did it so right the sense there you know the I suppose slight novice mistake you know mistaking light tanks for actual medium tanks not sure what route is intending needs to be a bit more well thought out there I think slow advance up here not sure what the pioneers are leading the front with the oh panzer for the panzer grenadiers and right here of course the pack ended up being a bit useless MD4 to retreat it I'm not sure why it actually moved about like that. Might have been some pathing issues, but it should just have stopped about here and just fired away at the T-70 from range when it was, you know, with a damaged engine. Now Rouse is quickly reacting, sending troops back. Still no mines up here. And we do know he has the munitions for it, so a bit disappointed. Also noting a lot of resort manpower being floated. That's definitely, though, a larger novice mistake. I mean, in some senses, you know, quite fine and dandy player but also I mean this is not good this is bad comrade in particular considering he's gone conscript support he's not really doing much to play into which is you know conscripts which of course then brings into question why did he go for that doctrine in the first place and these Panzer guns, oh, that was really also a poor move. I mean, you don't want to be engaging tanks out in the open like that with your Panzer guns, in particular in the T-70. So that was rather poorly conceived in terms of tactical and also moving kind of up close to your conscript, conscripts with submachine guns. I mean, right here now, Erhard Rouse is all of a sudden committing a lot of mistakes and some of them would be rather basic novice mistakes in some regards. Sniper on the way, still no penal troops. He really should consider getting some more frontline troops up. And there we go, conscripts too late in retreating, and the scout car got them. And now, Red and Black really need some placement infantry. He needs more boots on the ground. No. And that needs to happen rather quickly. And Grenadier is picking up the pantry takes that, on the other hand, is good news. T-70 wants more on the prowl. More Panzer going to be moving up here for Erhard Raus. Also known, of course, Rapid Conscription is here available. Works for about one and a half minute, gives you conscripts, and placement of other units lost. Basically, relief infantry. Still floating manpower, a deadly sent in company of heroes. Another pack. This one has not been recruited. Oh wait, it has been. Oh, that's good. And he's actually pulling it back for reinforcement and healing. That's really good. That's nice to see, in fact. But Rouse is getting rather passive. That's after getting his opponent the upper hand, who's apparently neglecting these parts, which is not good at all. But of course, there's also the fact again he's not mining at all. And also considering the doctrine he's gone for, a munitions cache could work in nicely with, you know, working with assault packages, cons rapid conscription, and incendiary artillery barrages. Again, you know, try and consider, you know, perhaps this cache might work in with the doctrine I'm choosing on this fuel cache. Overall, you know, 
caches work quite nicely in supporting whatever strategy you do intend on going for. And from that case, doctrines, which of course are part of strategy. So try and keep that in mind as well. Moving up here, Grenadiers following up. Dual Panzer Sect. T75 away. Again, needs to get away, get away. Red and Black again keeps mistaking his T70 for a tank, it seems. And there we go, the Grenadiers get a kill, wiping them out. And this T34 seems to have been forgotten. Still no infantry, come on. And the snipers are hiding in the church, ever the cliche, but a nice one. Certainly churches were also generally removed, in particular the highest people once, and they were quite nice sniper nests, but also because they also tend to work as an observation post. For any artillery observers. And finally also occasionally basically to avoid giving enemy aircraft anything to actually use as a landmark. Or for that matter, enemy artillery. I believe as well. So all sorts of fun little facts there. Panzer gun it is here, not upgraded with Panzer Shrek's. Both scout cars still operational, that's nice here. Not again, I mean, the general rule is if you have a problem with floating manpower, again, that's just my suggestion, of course, I could always be wrong, but it's, you know, just work towards learning to spend manpower. Then afterwards, once you've gotten that right, you can actually begin learning to spend it on something useful. In this case, of course, the basic one, you know, just get conscripts. Also noting a support weapon company up now, that would actually be a good move to support something with. A Maxim, a Mortar, field gun of course. Although currently, armor is not really the issue he needs to worry about from Erhardhaus. And the Sperrverbande raus. MD4 here blasting away at the conscripts and combat engineers. Incendia Barrage in return. Pioneers are being spotted. Raus really getting passive now that he's, you know, being put under screws here from Mr. Red and Black, which actually is not necessarily a good thing at all. Since it allows Mr. Well, you know, Red and Black more time to basically do whatever he wants and build up more forces to basically try and sledge Emma's way through. T-34 moving in here without support at all. Moving into the blind, that was not really a good idea. No, does manage to nicely crush all of these grenadiers. Move on into the fire. Retreat, Wixook. And the pack forward needs to move. And Raus is suddenly getting a bit slow again. Very slow pack. He also spotting apparently. But Raus is getting overwhelmed. Which of course is a problem trying to manage too much. Second fuel cash up here for Red and Black. Raus still needs to get moving. Mach schnell. And the pack here got wiped out. Not really looking good at the moment. Raus needs to get it together. At the current moment, it's first on uh, armor support core could work out with a Stug and perhaps an Ostwind. Would be my suggestion. And the T-34 on the way, less than good armor handling, but again that always seems to be a problem with the better players in some cases. And looks like the snipers were killed as well. Hm, I wonder how. But the house needs to get moving. More aggressively with more fervor. A T-70 following up him, the T-34. Nice rifle grenade doing a bit of good damage there. Point secured there. md 4 has not been accrued. T-34 moving up in the name of the motherland. There was actually T-34 which is not seen in the game. The T-34 57 I believe which was more of a tank destroy variant. Had a more high velocity gun than T-34 76. But it actually did less damage due to the fact it was a 57 with a gun. But it actually existed. So a little fun fact there. Panzer gun is moving up here. Sturmgewehr is turning into the troops. T-34 counter-attacking infantry following up. Field gun good code down. And nothing to cover it again. Though it looks like he's finally stopping floating resources. But again, you know, the more you float resources, then we actually end up losing in some sense resources because you're not applying enough pressure. And the T-34 really should not have its re-exposed gun it is with Panzer Shreks. Again, 
Red and Black really seems to fumble it when it comes to armor. And is now going to lose a T-34 again. So that's definitely something Red and Black might want to consider actually, you know, working on his armor handling. Now the T-70 making a head-on assault on a pack. Not really a good idea either. The T-70 is not a medium tank. I mean, let's actually ta head over to the mid-game analysis. What would have been better is actually if he tried to attack from here. Well, obviously not there, but over here then. They're trying to attack from a less expected angle, applying pressure there. Instead, you know, he just used as a medium tank and lost it. And he's even having trouble using the medium tanks. In that sense, Red and Black needs to f get together his armor handling. But again, ultimately, he's in the situation because he floated too many resources. He did not fortify his positions well enough with the mines. In fact, no mines at all, really. Nice aggressive play initially, but then ultimately he loses all steam. And then it sort of becomes down to a more fumbling match between the two. And of course, the house is not without fault either. A bit too slow. Suddenly getting very passive when Sonny hit with all of that. He loses all spirit. Not recruiting any vehicles or heavy weapons that much either. And he might want to consider some less head-on assaults at time as well. And of course, some minds of his own. And of course, I suppose also Doctrine. In fact, what has he chosen? If he has chosen anything, we are seeing... Combined arms, but we're not seeing the artillery field officer. We're in fact seeing nothing at use at all from the doctrine, so that's also a problem, I would say. But what Mr. Red and Black needs to consider, of course, is getting maximum up. He should also get a mortar up, I think, and he should definitely get some more infantry. Really, that ought to be his priority. More infantry. More infantry. More boots on the ground. And that's less of a problem for Yad Raus, but it's pretty much all infantry has. He has no support weapons, really. He needs either a mortar, he needs to work his way up towards some armor, get out a stew, perhaps a Panzer IV or an Ostwind. Then apply some pressure to his vile Bolshevik foe. But again, something needs to m happen, he needs to move on because he's soon going to be hit with a more flourishing combined arms thing. Though Red and Black really needs to get some infantry out, that's really going to be his major Achilles heel. So let's return to the fight. MG42 finally, Panzer is advancing up. Combat unit is standing about, not even near the fire, which means they're basically just freezing to death. Sending up the Maxim, and we're seeing actually rapid conscription up. Combat need to retreat. Remember, you don't get squads replaced just for losing them, you actually need to lose six men. It's about, about individual member losses. T 34 went down. And if you're going to use all that resource you actually need to put it to use, you so far not suffer the losses sufficient. I would definitely recommend getting the maximum out first, and since it's the one that can actually afford to absorb the losses. I mean, basically, the problem here with the rapid conscription use is he doesn't actually have the infantry units to actually make it happen really sensibly. So in that sense, I mean, that's a bit of a problem. I mean, don't use an ability you actually can't really get the most out of. That's what I describe as a pro Oh, Pack 40 took a direct hit from the field gun and got wiped out. Pentagon is doing what they can, but they are getting suppressed. And there we go, field gun wiped out. Looks like a conscript squad was replaced, perhaps. Perhaps that was a freshly trained one. Hard to say. Though, considering everything, it might have been a replaced one. So at least he's got two squads of infantry now. Another T-70 out. Uh, I was a bit unsure what to place his pack, it would seem. And why is he remaining his Panzer gun is out there getting shot at by the Maxim? And this scout car's not doing much either. Definitely some issues here. And then there we go, T-70 going to see if he can't sneak in on a flank. Well done, well done. Still no armor caught up. Although we have seen the gun this could quickly move up and try and get it with a Panzer Shrek. Die Raketen Panzerbüchse. And there we go. South is falling. Lots of units otherwise at full strength standing about doing nothing. Not really good. Again, he could be building. He could be moving the grenadiers up here to take points from away from the north. But nothing's happening. So Ehad Raz does need to work about that. Apparently I missed that in the first viewing, so perhaps I'll grate this down to perhaps being 
a bit more novicey than initially thought. But at least he's got a medic bunker. But we are seeing the pack 43 coming out now. That's wondrous. The Spell for Bandus and up some of the heavier anti tank weaponry. Of course, earlier in the war, what usually been more used as improvised anti tank weaponry, besides the fact, would have been in fact the like to Feldhobbit's Axeen. That was also quite commonly used for some early on to, for example, deal with KV tanks and other heavy armor when there was nothing else around that could actually handle it. And it was not uncommon throughout the war to see that happen. For example, the British did the same. For example, particularly in North Africa, with their 25 pounder guns. And that sense, the same could also be said about anti tank guns. Even though ones weren't exactly designated as field cannons, were still occasionally had high explosive rounds to deal with dug in units. But now we do see the pack 43 is up. Conscript is going to sneak up, hit the flank here. MD42 has still not been recruited. Panzer is still counter attacking. The spare for Bandu doing what he can. He's moving up here. Gunners need to be careful. But they are in cover. Well, they were in cover. Panzer Gunners might want to stop. Apparently, Erhard is not paying attention down here. Ach du Lieber. Mein Gott. And the units inside the building need to be a bit careful. The pack 43 doesn't wipe them out. And apparently now Raus remembers, oh wait, there were some Russians back there clearing up my Unterstützungwaffen. That is not good. Quick counter attack from the Panzer but now out in the open again. Taking heavy losses on one squad. And there we go, one squad of Conscripts wiped out the Panzer Guns, managed to away the other squad. Erhard Raus is absolutely not pushing up here, that's really bad. He should at least send in some pioneers to do the job, since they're clearly not doing anything except drink beer. The T-34 falling up, T-70 going to repair, of course, actually using the conscript to repair, well done, finally using his doctrine a bit, again. That's it. Fully reinforced. Amazingly though, I mean, it's some time since he actually went for this Battle Phase 2 upgrade, but he's yet to actually build the structure. A bit disappointing, that. A bit disappointing, just saying. And really now, Red and Black need to stop considering a frontal assault with armor because the Pack 43 is pretty much going to lock it all down in seconds. I mean, his only chance at a head or assault would have to be during a blizzard if there was absolutely no units in front of it, so the tanks would actually sneak by it. Otherwise, the range is simply going to wipe everything out. Church there taking a nasty hit, and what was that? Grenadiers leading the assault here, the spare for Bande moving in. Rifle grenades. Panzer's X. T70 needs to be careful, in fact its main gun seems utterly wrecked. No, he's actually moving it forward, what are you doing red and black? Another T34 following up. Finally! The support armor core is up. He could go for the Stug, he could go for an Ostwind, he could go for a Panzer IV. Small engagement down here. T-70 moves in, it's still not been repaired! So no idea why he's doing that. But apparently Erhard Raus took the bait and ran. But Herr Hauptmann, it cannot fire! Shut up and just run! I want to get out of here anyways! No idea why he's wiring there. Raus really seems to be committing a bit of odd decisions all of a sudden. It looks like Red and Black is preparing for something with his tanks. He's setting up in a small reserve position, but question is, what does he intend? And finally, a mortar. Finally. That was bloody late and probably should have been in there a lot earlier. He could, in fact, use it to smug out the pack 43, I suppose. Finally, repairing the T 70 as well. And Raus getting himself a Panzerkampfwagen 4. A lone grenadier squad with Panzer X, that's not necessarily a good idea trying to get that T-70. The T-70 needs to get out of there in response. Come on T-70! 
and again Red and Black needs to work on his armor handling Panzer Kampfwagen 4, Mark 1 is upgrading with the machine gun on top and of course supporting it, well, we are seeing lots of Panzer Gunners and some Pioneers following up but moving a tank ahead blindly in a blizzard generally isn't a good idea that's basically a recipe for getting an engine disabled and afterwards knocked out another field gun out, might want to get those mortar crewmen to a fire just suggesting casually still holding on to most of the victory pot for the time being so that's going to change sooner or later yes. a 30-34 clearly Mr. Retton Black here is setting up for some sort of assault question is where shall it strike with how much force and how much support I mean if he was to launch it from the north he could actually do a lot of damage he could then sneak up some unit from the front and he should not be doing a blizzard by the way he should be able to call in some incendiary strike on this one clearing out the pack 43 and then having the T-34s rampage through everything else that he has but no 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 don't do that don't tell me you're going to attack within the arc of fire of the pack 43 yet yet and already the actual telemine was up well done Raus but less well done there because already the pack 43 is opening up 1T34 down 1T34 down only two left Panzer 4 moving up pack 43 needs to turn about again large thing couldn't be moved by hand otherwise and had to be constantly towed by the truck or tractor there we go that's one T-34 that's going to go down. Do not underestimate the power of the Panzer AB Kanone 43. Scout car spotted and there we go. All three T-34s was down because for some inexplicable reason he decided to attack from, uh, well, pretty much something that put him within direct fire of the Pack 43 right away. With no consideration and no anything to support it. No, and he actually had the munitions to call in an incendiary artillery barrage. That's really just poorly conceived. And of course, there was no infantry, not even a mortar support. I mean, that was pretty much a recipe for failure. And really should not be repeated by anyone. I mean, yes, it's great with three, three T-34s without any support. They're going to be limited in effectiveness, particularly when up against the Pack 43 and some other stuff. And now we're seeing artillery going up for us here. They like to fill her bits and a few plucky conscripts leading up the front nothing covering the flank except the incendiary artillery barrage conscripts might want to consider being elsewhere but no Breton Black doesn't seem to be caring Another T-34, at least he's you know, sticking to the T-34s, that's good, but again it doesn't quite seem like he fully knows the capabilities, which is a bit of a shame. Field guns moving up directly on against the Pack 43. Now the artillery is firing the maximum, might want to consider getting out of the building before the howitzer brings down the House of God. Right around their ears. Conscripts and whatnot versus Scout Car. Scout Car quickly goes down. It's not really a defensive, you know, static unit. It's an idea why Raus decides to use it like that. And there you go. The church collapses with the maximum crew in it. Malta crew not doing too well either. T-34 advances up. Pack 43 still standing nicely. Not really looking comforting. 
and the pack's pos oh, field gun position in such a way that Panzer IV can essentially easily flank them. Heavy cover nicely covering the conscripts. T-34 quickly following up, following up with an anti-tank grenade. Pack 44 of course, quick turn around to deal with the T-34. And what is this? Large infantry assault going in there. Lots of Panzer Grenadiers. Grenadiers. T-34 though seems to be winning the fight against the Panzer IV. But of course the Grenadiers and Panzer Grenadiers might turn this around pretty quickly. And looks like some poor bastard burst into flames. And again, floating resources. Again, something Red and Black needs to work on pretty severely. More of our troops have been lost. Fire. Mortal crew getting wiped out down there. Speeding this up a bit. And another T-34 in pretty much dire straits. And there we go, game over, a loss for the Soviet Union, a victory for the Germans. Sort of middling, they both show some promise, but also obviously show some mistakes. Partly for Harald Rauses, he seems a bit, you know, easily intimidated by his opponent. Can do alright initially, but if his opponent hits him too hard, he gets a bit too passive. He needs to work a bit on that. More mining, and he needs to get more aggressive with harassment at times, because that could actually draw away some of the attention from himself. He also needs to get a bit better handling his scout cars and his armor, but obviously scout cars, I mean, they don't really work well as defensive static units. That was a bit of a problem for him. And some other mistakes in and there with infantry, but you know, we're all did all right, and he certainly was able to endure what his opponent ran, and which ultimately probably won him the game. Red and Black, very aggressive player, very you know, rush, 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 but he had a problem actually handling his armor and a problem actually getting enough infantry on the ground, which really hurt him in the long run. There were too many combat engineers, not enough conscripts. He didn't actually, you know make good use of this building. I would have loved to see some penal battalions and some other things and perhaps, you know, and mortar early on but otherwise the main problem was, you know, a bit not really much usage of his doctrine and finally floating too much manpower. So there you go, hope you enjoyed this match, hope you learned a thing or two. If you did want to subscribe to your friends, if you didn't well why not send a replay video and provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.